not every morning I get uh, the pleasure of introducing one of Wales' richest men, uh, but he wasn't always that. Uh, he was once upon a time a young entrepreneur from Newport with dreams of a brighter future, just like some of you here this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, a huge round of applause for Sir Terry Matthews. Thank you, Jamie. That's quite, a, quite an introduction. So you'll see uh, it says Terry Matthews, Wesley Clover. Just to give you the right umbrella here, Wesley Clover, it was named after the church that I went to, the Wesley Church. And when I was little, five years old, I saw this four-leaf clover, and I knew it was a little different. So I picked it up, playing with my friends, took it home, and my grandmother thought it was wonderful. And she pressed it into the family Bible, and there it is to this day. And then when I started up my first company, I borrowed $4,000. So this wasn't very much money. You couldn't pay anybody, not with $4,000. But I started up a company. And I did that, believe it or not, with such a small amount of money in Canada. And I did it through a holding company, believe it or not, that I called Wesley Clover. And that's where the name Wesley Clover came from. And here we are, you know, God knows how long later, 40 odd years later. And with just that $4,000, I worked with some new graduates with a partner of mine called Mike Copeland. And we started a company called Mytel, just with $4,000. Now, why am I bringing up this story? Because you see, $4,000 is not very much money. And I paid those people who were new grads, living at home, new grads that no children, no family to speak of other than their, their mother, father, and so on, siblings, and they worked for nothing, but I gave them shares. That was my way of paying them. And each $1 share in 1973, 10 years later, was worth $2.5 million. Now that was, that, let me tell you, that process over 10 years made me very wealthy. And I enjoyed it very much. I learned so much in those early days that even a small amount of money and even people working for nothing, you can create a global entity. And that really is the message today, that there are unbelievable opportunities out there for young people. And I will tell you very quickly that Working with young people, this small team working around the clock, seven days a week, what did we work on? We worked on what we found that clients needed. Now, in those days, there were rotary dial phones, and we developed a tone receiver, pop, 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 for push-button dialing that all of the big switching manufacturers wanted, and they bought our product, and boom, up it came grew very, very fast, actually. I could give you the year-by-year -year breakdown of who bought what because I lived through it. But the excitement, the pleasure of working with young people and creating that company, it's difficult to express to you how much enjoyment there is in that. Now, here I am 40 years later, and I'm still doing it. I start up about four new companies a year, always with new grads, it's important to choose those young people to make sure the team is strong. The number one item is the team strong. And, uh, and so I continue to do that. We focus on things that people need. So this is, this is a pull, not a push. And I would quickly explain to you that this isn't, I have a great idea. If it's a great idea, then a customer will want it. The first thing is custom, it's about sales. I explain that to the teams time and time again. It's not about how many lines of code, it's about sales. And there are a few other little tricks that make that successful. I mean, you imagine today, there's over 100 companies started up, continues at about four a year, and out of that over 100, I've only lost six. How can you have such success? Well, it's like a little chemistry formula, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, mix it up and it works. It starts with young people. It starts with a client demand, not an idea where you say, I have an idea, it's a great idea, work. That actually is not the way to do it. If you go down that track, 
and you work hard with a small team, and after, let's say, six months or a year, you have some sort of product, and you find, well, it doesn't sell very well, there's a tendency then to work even harder to prove that you're right. The truth is it was wrong from the get-go. Get it right first. Talk to clients first. Talk to channels to market. Make sure that there's a client pull, not a push. So here we are today. Now, wh where are we in today and why am I standing here? I find that this is almost like in North America, we say a candy shop. I have never seen so many opportunities in my life. Every vertical, every industry sector is going through a technology change. In Canada, as an example, where I live most of the time, there's a thing called shared services. The entire government, almost 200,000 people, they're going through a technology refresh, the biggest investment that the government has ever made in IT. And every department, they have their particular requirements, but it will go through a shared services environment. The UK government, the French government, big departments in the US, going through technology refresh, I have never seen so many changes, so many requirements that can be met, and an opportunity for young people to do well. It is totally a pleasure. So I interviewed, let, let me give you an example. For each one member of that team, it typically takes 10 to 15 interviews, and it most often is not the graduates with the highest marks. It's very often people that are lower on the scale but have an ability, just the attitude is good. Look for attitude and work ethic. These are the things that I look for. And it's very important to me to get to know the people. Put them together and take a look at what visibility we've got for uh, opportunities. The opportunities now, you will hear in this conference, time and time again, you will hear things like uh, broadband mobile, 4G, You'll hear things like uh, cloud. You'll hear things like much more powerful mobile devices that people carry. Wherever I go in the world, the opportunities are just huge. I travel, as an example, roughly one week out of every two. Last week I was in Turkey. Two weeks before that I was in Mexico City. And again, I look at the young people to form companies. And I enjoy it no end. Now, in this particular part of the world, I have about six startup companies. They are, I would say, amongst my most pleasurable. Simon Gibson, if you'd like to stand up, Simon is my partner here in Wesley Clover, and, uh, and I applaud the efforts. So, where to go from here? I think more. I enjoy it no end, and I'm happy to just open up and discuss with anybody what I do, the way I make people have with shares, and the shares become very powerful to them. Much more better, much better in life, I think, to offer young people ownership, and the ownership becomes valuable. If I go back to the Mitel days and the Newbridge days, Newbridge grew to be something like uh, 700-odd million dollars in one quarter. That was just before it was sold at the peak of the market to Alcatel. That was a $10.8 million uh, investment by Alcatel. It continues to be, for them, the fastest growing part of the company. So I'm very pleased again to be here. Welcome you all to the Celtic Manor. And I look forward to talking to you, anyone, about how to take young people, have them enthusiastic, and grow companies and be successful. Thank you very much. Thank you.